Okay, I'm doing pretty well with my Z80 Playground. Uh, I've got it communicating over serial with uh, with my computer, with a virtual terminal, so I can see what it's doing. I can send characters to it from the keyboard, and I can send characters from the board to my computer. So let's take a look at that. What I'll need to do is plug in this FTDI connector, which converts from the serial output that the board's producing to USB um, serial again on USB but it's a different type of serial so that I can connect this up to the computer and on my PC I've got TerraTerm running and when we start the board up we get a nice little message produced by the board um, so I've been playing around with a bit of color and stuff like that so I can produce some green background on the text just to demonstrate that text is being sent properly from the Z80 playground to my PC so What's happening here then, I'm in TerraTerm, which is a terminal emulator, and I've set this up um, on the serial port, and you can see that it's serial port 9, COM9, and I'm running at 460,800 board, which is quite a decent board rate. Let me show you the code that you need in the Z80 in order to configure the UART. Right, this is the code that I've written um, in I'm just using a text editor notepad plus plus to edit this um, and in order to configure the UART which is the first thing that we need to do when the Z80 playground starts up we have to put it into divisor latch setting mode by writing a certain value to the UART output port and then we need to configure the board rate which we do by taking the frequency of the crystal that we've got plugged in and dividing it down. Now I did have a 1.8432 megahertz crystal installed on the board initially and the fastest board rate you could get there was 115200 board and I thought I'd like to go a little bit faster because this is only the board rate that we're using to communicate between the board and the FTDI connector. So the total distance that serial is traveling is from the 16550 chip about one inch to the FTDI um, cable and then it's being converted off into a different type of serial output to go down the USB cable so it doesn't have to travel very fast. So I thought what would be the fastest serial connection I could get? So I swapped the crystal for a 7.3728 megahertz crystal and the sum you need to do there is take 7.3728, multiply it by a million to get it in hertz, divide by 16 because the UART needs a 16 times clock signal, and then you can uh, divide it either by 4, uh, by 2, or I divide it by 1 to get the 460800 board that I'm using to communicate to the PC. So you, all you have to do is configure this um, divisor in here and then you configure 8 bits, no parity and one stop bit. So it's pretty straightforward actually. And then when you want to output a character, you just have to check. You have to check that the previous character had already finished being outputted and then you can output a new one. If you don't do the check, the characters will overrun each other and you'll get corrupted data. And on the way in, you just check whether there's a character available by reading from a port. And if there is, you read from a different port to get the character coming in. It's all very straightforward, actually. So I've written a simple monitor program, which I've put into the EEPROM. So I've programmed, well, written the program in Z80 assembly language, assembled it, put it into this EEPROM, and it's currently running. And um, whatever I type on my PC keyboard, will be sent to the Z80 Playground and whatever the Z80 Playground sends back will appear on my computer screen because obviously this single board computer hasn't got a, its own screen or keyboard yet. So let's try that out. For example, if I press, um, uh, I've got it set up, so if you press four on the keyboard, then the ROM light goes off. And if you press three, the ROM light comes back on again. Uh, and you can toggle the user light as well by doing a similar kind of thing. So that just demonstrates that keys are definitely being sent from my computer keyboard through to the Z80 Playground. Now the monitor also allows you to look around the memory, which and finally allows me to explore the way that the RAM mapping is going. So I can get up uh, a screen dump of one page of memory at a time. So here we're looking at page zero, so going from address zero up to address FF in memory, 
This is obviously the ROM, because the ROM's at the bottom of the address map. And if we step up through the pages, we can look at, well, this is the ROM program here, the monitor program, and that isn't particularly long. I'll put a little message at the end just so I can see where it finished. And the rest of this is just garbage that's sitting in the EEPROM. If I return to page zero and go down a page, so basically to the last page of memory, because I'll wrap around, this is the final page in memory. We're right up in the RAM area here, and I set the stack to be right at the top of RAM. So these funny numbers here are the stack, and these other numbers are just blanks that are in the RAM that were completely empty when the RAM got switched on. Now, I've also made this monitor so that it can show the memory map. So here we're seeing the memory map from naught up to 64K. And in red, we've got the sections that are ROM and in green, we've got the sections that are RAM. So finally, I get to see the exact memory map of the single board computer. And um, it, the computer itself works this out by trying to write a byte to each of the pages in memory one at a time and then read it back. And if the memory that it reads back is the same as the thing it wrote, then it knows it's RAM. If it's different, then it knows it's ROM. Uh, and now that's quite interesting because the ROM and the RAM are both switchable in various different ways. So the RAM, if I pull this jumper out and move it over to another position, the RAM can be, uh, it can either be 16K of ROM and 48K of RAM or 32K of both. So if we look at the memory map again, now we've got 32K of ROM and 32K of RAM. ROM's always at the bottom of memory, the RAM's always the remaining bit at the top. And because we've got 64K of RAM in the RAM chip, uh, there's a 64K RAM chip here, so we're basically wasting 32K of the RAM because the ROM's sitting over the top of it. Um, if I flick the... probably shouldn't do it with the power on, but I've done it anyway. Flick that back, have another look at the memory map, and now we're on 16K of ROM, uh, 48K of RAM. Now, one of the other things that it can do is you can make the ROM switchable. Um, so if I move this jumper, it might crash, actually. Let's just have a go at that. Uh, if I make, move that jumper down to there, then the ROM is switched on and off with the ROM light. So when this light goes off, the ROM's off. When the light comes on, the ROM's on. Now, how is that working? How are we still managing to run a program? Obviously, it is still running. Let's take a look at the memory map. It's completely RAM. Uh, the entire 64K is RAM because the ROM light is turned off. And what does that indicate? Well, it means that we're currently running the program because the program still definitely is running. You can see it's still running. So we're running the program now from RAM. And what I did was a little trick. When the Z80 Playground first boots up, it copies the whole of the contents of the ROM down into the RAM, which you can do by reading a byte and then writing it back to the same location because of the slightly quirky way that I've set up the ROM and RAM configuration. So everything that's in the ROM gets copied into the RAM. So whether you switch the ROM on and it's running from ROM or you switch the ROM, or you switch the ROM off and it's running from RAM, uh, it's still running the same program in both places. So if we look at page naught now, we're in RAM mode, we're reading page naught from the RAM. And if we switch the ROM back on, uh, look at the memory map, we've got ROM, and we look at page naught. We're now looking at the same program, but this time we've just read it out of ROM. So it's working really well, actually. I've got a program running here. Uh, it seems really stable. It's going at 4 megahertz on the clock. It's hardly drawing any current at all, probably about 30 milliamps. Um, everything seems to be going absolutely perfectly. So my next step is going to be to put a language into the ROM, most likely some sort of basic and um, see if I can do a bit of programming on it.